What is this? There's no snow on the ground. We've had snow here in Kansas City. It's not windy. It's gonna actually be 55 today. I've been working on a video for the last two days to try to get this video shot for you guys because I'm I really want to do it. And Sheila has left me alone. She has three more days of work. And she's like, next week, it's it. And she'll be here full time, so she'll finish what she was doing um, to help at the church get them ready for a bunch of stuff. So she is going to be complete, completely without a job. This is it. We are cashing in. We're pushing all our chips in. But the reason I wanted to shoot this video today is there is a lot of people wanting to sell their RVs this spring. And we were there. We were one of those people back when we first started. I'll go over that here in a little bit. But today we're going to meet Wes. Wes is with Olathe Ford RV. And why is he important? Because we didn't buy our new rig for them. He is important because of how they helped us out so much um, to get to where we are. And I think this video is important if you're looking to sell your RV, go through a dealership, get some valuable information. So let's roll the intro. I'm gonna head about 15 minutes over to see Wes. I've tried to do this for two days. Things that kept getting in the way, we had to get approval, all this wonderful stuff. But today we're going to see Wes. And I'm excited about this because he's very knowledgeable and he helped us out a lot. And yeah, I think he's gonna help you out a lot coming out this year if you're looking to buy a new RV or if you're looking to sell the one you currently have. So let's roll the footage, roll the intro, and let's go see what we can learn today. Let's do it. A man and a woman left their home to switch things up and go on the road. And they didn't know where they would go, but it's got to be better than staying home. They switched it up. They switched it up. I'm excited. Wes was with some people, so I'm gonna wait for a second. I'm gonna go in. So as you can see, wonderful Olathe Ford RV. And um, I don't know if you remember our story. You can see kind of the backstory of how we got to where we're at um, with the passing of my mom and then she'll losing her dad. And then he left a fifth wheel. And, and then we had this fifth wheel to see if we liked to camp. And I'll put the link up here so you can kind of get those answers. But when we made the decision to get rid of that fifth wheel and look for a way to take our toys, like the motorcycle and the kayaks and the things that we want, the electric bikes, and we had to go through the process of looking for a rig, then it comes the process of you're trying to sell the one you currently have. And we did, I put it on Facebook, I did the Craigslist thing, I was answering stuff. I had the price at this price, which I thought it was gonna be. Then I had, it, I lowered it and then it still didn't sell and then people were asking questions and it was just a, a pain. And then somebody said, I, think, I don't know if it was dad or somebody said, why don't you check out Olathe Ford RV? So I picked up the phone and I called and I got a hold of this gentleman named Wes and you'll get to meet him. And he was just very educational. Wasn't a sales guy really, he was just trying to you know, share with me how their process works. And it's a little bit different. If I didn't want to do the trade in, they would actually allow me to store my rig here and then by chance, I could set a price on it, and if I want to, they'll help negotiate or do whatever, and then I could work through those details with Olathe Ford RV, and Olathe Ford RV would go through it and do all the stuff. They'd actually buy the rig from me. So it was like a, a hybrid of a trade-in, but I had time to work with because our new rig wasn't gonna be done for a while. So, I don't know, it's just a, a really good setup for us. So it worked out amazing, and we sold our rig in a short amount of time, and I have some great things and I'm gonna hopefully Wes will pick up on those and be able to share with them their process. I don't want them to give away the secret sauce on how they do things because there's still that competitive things in the RV world, but 
to share how the process works and I think the highs and lows and the benefits and what you can expect if you're going to sell your RV or look for a new RV and I think there's going to be some good value in this today. So that being said, let's run in here, see what Wes is up to. I got to put on my mask. There's my mask and then we'll go do that. I'm kind of excited about this one. Unfortunately, Sheila's not with me anyway because she'd probably have me looking at rigs. All right, I'm digressing. Let's go. Okay, we're in, we're in. I'm gonna sneak in here on Wes and we're gonna, I'm gonna see what he's doing and answer questions. Ready, here he is, look, he's already got people coming in. This is how busy this man is. Yeah, he's right there. He's answering questions. They're making deals. Deals going down. Is this Wes all the time, he's always busy? Well, wait a second. All right, there he is, the man, the myth, the legend. Good morning, sir. Mr. West, I'm gonna take this off since I'm far away from you. All right, so he has agreed to answer some amazing questions, but I wanna, you know, I'm so thankful to you for you helping and what we did and where our journey was. And I thought coming in here, he could actually pass on some valuable wisdom to everyone about maybe where we are in the marketplace with MSRPs being so high, where you are if you're gonna to try to sell your RV and how those adjustments are being made right now. And then kind of we'll touch base about maybe how you're helping me, or how you helped us sell our stuff and then how you're helping other people. But it all kind of correlates together. How long have you been here? I started here in 2012. So he's so, been here a while. Yeah. And you've been in the RV industry for how many years? I sold my, I got my first sales job in 92. So he's been doing it a while. So the guy's got a little wisdom. That's a nice way of saying I'm old, right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, if you got wisdom, you gotta be old. Yeah, 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 yeah. We call it, sometimes we call it seasoned. Seasoned, I like that. You like yeah, seasoned? I like that better. You're yep. seasoned because you know, that it makes you yummy. Yes. <laughs> So, <laughs> um, let's just sit here for a second. I'm going to ask you a few questions and then maybe we'll run outside so we don't have to deal with this, this stuff and we can stay socially distanced and stuff. But let me set you down and then we'll kind of ask some questions. All right, Wes. It's time. I'm going to put you in the hot seat. All right. I'm okay. Ready. So, I know I have the camera over here and it's on an awkward angle, but we'll try to talk to you as we do this. I should uh, look at the camera, maybe. maybe well, it's up to you. Okay. You're actually talking to the world, Wes. This is the world you're talking to. I tell my customers that once uh, they bring their unit for me to sell, yeah, that uh, they uh, get uploaded RV Trader, and so now they have a world market. A world, because you're all over the world. Wherever the internet is. Wherever it is, because the people can actually come here from anywhere in the United States and purchase a unit. We've had people fly from both coasts. Wow. Uh, from Florida, we've had them fly in. Um, it literally is a, a Let's, let's just say the United States wide market. Right. Um, in my earlier career, I have sold one to uh, Australia. Yeah. What? Yeah. So what we're saying is, is that if you like anything you're seeing in this video, then you can always call here, fly into Olathe, Kansas, or we're actually in Gardner, Kansas, which is south of Olathe, Kansas, um, to Olathe, Fort Hardy. So that's kind of cool. Look at that! We got a plug in there. I didn't even mean to. <laughs> it's it, that's the wisdom you talked about. <laughs> that's the season. That's this. years, you know. <laughs> That was in 2000, probably eight, I think. Yeah. Seven, somewhere in there. Well, we flew to Chicago to buy our truck. So we get the idea of going anywhere to get a vehicle now. So that's pretty cool. So let's let's go over. We're seeing a trend. Everyone's wanting, because of the pandemic and all the stuff that's going on in the world, everyone's wanting to get out because they're sick of it, right? So last year we saw this happen where there was a flood to the market, mm -hmm. people buying RVs. You guys were super busy. Mm -hmm. Here we are in 2021. Yep and inventory is low and you're dealing with shortages on supplies and we had a great conversation about um, msrps mm -hmm. so everyone's talking about this is the worst time to buy an rv but the fact is is that it's not necessarily the worst time it's just that there's supply and demand and this is kind of where we are right now and there's been adjustments for i, I set this up basically telling them about if you're going to sell your rv and you're going to go buy one 
you have to understand the two principles right now that are at work in the marketplace. So why don't you explain to them what's going on with like the MSRP pricing and that type of stuff versus what's going on with the used type scenario. Well, the banks use the NADA guide as uh, help to arrive at some what you might call it loan value. Yeah, right. And so um, the loan value did not keep up with the retail price because the retail price to the retail is supposed to keep up with the actual sales. Right. So sales went through the roof and so they raised that and right. you know, so what do you do with this because how long does it last? Right. And when it first started, I mean, in in the first month that it really became a big deal, I mean, everything stopped for us for just a two week period. Right. And then after that, it was like, you know, you can't, you don't want to get on a boat or they closed all that. Or you couldn't get on a plane. And, right. And so it was the only game in town to spend time with your family away from your, your residence. So, but it's been a, it's been a big deal for much longer than that, obviously. And, right. and uh, I started, my dad had a motor home when I was 16. We drove all the way to the coast, and, and, uh, and then he had another one, and then I pulled a travel trailer all the way to Florida with my kids when they right. were small. And so it's it's a big deal, and once people get hooked, I don't know percentages, but a lot of them stay with it, you know, and so that's what's happened is we've got new exposure to who knows how many. Right. And so, yeah, I'm sure some probably think, nah, nah I, I can't wait to get on a boat again, but I think a lot of people realize yeah. the family value right. that you get in an RV. Yeah. And so, you know, we traveled with my kids when they were young. I wanted to see family, but I didn't really want to stay in the house. Right. You know, because at bedtime you had to go take care of your kids and it's harder to do in somebody else's house. So if I had my trailer. So we're almost going back in time a little bit to back to a family value scenario where we're spending more time together, which is amazing. That's what RVs do they, really well. Yeah, they do really well. I, I think they do. But that price difference on the MSRP. So what you're saying is the MSRP stayed the same. But everyone's expecting, or it's gone up. MSRP would crawl up on, and now we're talking about used and new. Yes. Because, you know, the shortage of parts, all my representatives from the manufacturers say the vendors are having to raise their price because mm -hmm. everything's more complicated, you know, all the reasons COVID that has made for all of us. Right. And so they've had to raise. So we've had several, three, four, five percent raises and, you know, more than one in the last 12 months. It's just been unbelievable. Mm -hmm. But you kind of understand. I mean, we, we all know what we're going through. Yes, it's been a total cr crazy chaos. And so I, I explained to them a little bit. It's like, I reached out to Wes. Like, I grew up in um, Spring Hill, Kansas, which is just outside of Olathe. So Olathe Ford is a, they do amazing things in Olathe. They've been around forever. And then they started this. I don't know when they started the RV place, but it's been down here in Gardner, Kansas for quite a long time. And... So it's become like a, a staple in our community in the Kansas City market, I personally believe. And they have just a really great reputation. Well, when my father-in-law passed, we had this Montana, and we didn't know if we were going to do RV life. And then we figured out, okay, we're going to do this, but we can't use this Montana because I wanted to take the motorcycle. So I reached out and called here, and Wes actually picked up the phone. And he was very gracious, and he's like, are you going to trade it in? Are you going to do this? Are you going to do that? And so he walked me through steps in different scenarios. He didn't know me. He never met me. You did this. And you don't even probably remember. This is the reason I wanted to come and say thank you is because in a time when struggling a little bit, trying to figure out what we're going to do, you were just very candid and very like, here's what the facts are and here's what you can do. And if you want to do this, we can help you. And so that's been that's been the blessing. So we decided not to do a trade in, and because the place we were buying them, they weren't going to give us enough money. Right. And so Wes is like, well, we might have a solution for that. And so we brought it in, and he kind of helped us sell our RV to Olathe Ford RV, and basically find a new buyer. It was an interesting um, dynamic. It worked out really well for us. Um, but can you talk to like the process of? There's a lot of people across the United States and there's a lot of things where your business model, you're selling all new units, but you also have like the trade-ins that you're getting too and you're having to find new buyers. So can you kind of talk to the process a little bit? I mean, cause it's going to be different all over the place. Everywhere you go, you have to realize there's different things that come into play, but can you kind of talk through the process like people across the United States, if they're going to sell, doing a face, cause I did the Facebook, I did the Craigslist. All right and it didn't help the buyer. And here, I watched what happened and how the buyer got so many more perks, and I'll go over that in a second, but can you talk to the process of, since there's a shortage of new units, because you have units, 
you're also helping owners and you're kind of pairing everyone together. Yeah. It, it's, it's really kind of a simple process. I mean, right now, for someone to tell you that they know for sure what your RVs were, yeah. you know, I would have to doubt it because, I mean, um, you know, if you've got the, if you want an RV and you find what you want right now and you have the ability, well, then you buy it. Right. Because it's really hard to find and that's why people are flying all over the country to get them. Mm -hmm. And so I just try to facilitate, um, you know, bring it in and we'll start marketing and I'll try to get you this much and, and I will get, um, I'll market it at this point. Mm -hmm. and, and so we'll find the money because I, I also have to bring you the offers. Yep. And so if I can't get you what you want, then I tell you what I can do. And if you say, you know, I can live with that. But I've had it work both ways. I've had people, you know, bring them for, to me and, and we sell them the first day. So it's like a hybrid. What I'm saying is instead of doing like the traditional trade-in where I come in and I say, and you look at the book and you say, it's only going to be 47000 And I'm like, well, I know I can sell it on my own for more than that. And he's like, okay, if that's the case, then that's fine. But we're going to have to make some changes. And so it's this hybrid model where you agree that you're going to, Olathe Ford's buying it as like almost like a trade-in. It is. And they purchase it from you. And then from there, the new buyer has a new contract with Olathe Ford. And it's really nice because if you have some time, you can go through this process versus just doing the trade-in right away. Now, there is an other aspect here. And the other aspect would be, we were discussing just a little bit ago about in Kansas, like I said, you, this is really for any, every place is gonna be different. So in Kansas, we have a sales tax scenario too played out. and. Am I, am I right in that? Explain how that works in Kansas and like the trade-ins and things like that. In Kansas, if you trade something in, um, you only pay sales tax on the difference. Okay. And so sales tax here is about 9.475%. So it's almost a 10% swing that you gain. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes it is easier and better to, to just go in. ahead. If, if we have what you want, just do the trade-in. Yeah, we're going to give you a lesser number than you would have if you'd have wait and I'd have got a buyer ahead of time. Mm -hmm. But still, 10% is 10% depending on how many dollars. We're That's talking true. About. So you have to really keep that in consideration as mm -hmm. well. The difference was is that we came here and we liked you guys so much that unfortunately the rig that we were buying, we had already pre-ordered because we had already decided what we were going to do. Sure. But I didn't like what they were going to do for our trade-in. And so we had time that we could work with. And, and that's what you were saying is like, well, if you had the time, why don't we try to work something out? And that was that was the really nice part for us. And it worked out really, really well. And I imagine that doesn't work out so well for other people because it just kind of depends on your rig, depends on what people are looking for. But it does help um, because we were able to sell ours within a short amount of time. But yeah, it was a really good process. And in the meantime, I learned a lot and you educated me along the way. And we got to see a bunch of other rigs because then it came into question. This is honestly what happened. You had us go out and look at um, a Class A that had this big, huge toy hauler behind it. Oh, yeah, I remember. This, yeah. And you're like, well, if you're wanting to do that, have you seen that Class A out there? And I'm like, what? And quite honestly, when we walked through it, I was a little intimidated because I had never drove anything like this. And But it was a really nice setup. And now looking back, we thought... We could have done that because it had the toy hauler where we could have put the car up top and I could have put the motorcycles and then had the kayaks and oh I digress it was a really good that was a really good one that they're, they're amazing I mean they really are I think if I get to where I'm not in awe and you know I mean that's one of my favorite things which I have less time now than I used to when I was in sales but when right. a, new, a new unit come in I never missed it I'd go out and look through it and, and see what they you know come up with now yeah always something you almost kind of fall in love with the process you do you yeah. do but this has been really good. Is there anything else that you think you could add regarding those two? Because I want to step outside and just kind of walk around for a minute and ask yeah. you a couple of questions when we go out there. Is there anything that you think they could... Now, remember, you're talking to all the United States, just not Kansas. Now, Kansas is going to have its own set of rules. Missouri is going to have its set of rules. But is there anything um, in the process? If somebody's going to maybe try to sell their RV ahead of time, my thinking was is when we were trying to sell it, I had it on Craigslist, I had it on Facebook, I was fielding phone calls. And honestly, through the course of this, I think I sold it for $1,000 less than I, what I was trying to get on Facebook. And I know that sounds crazy, but um, when it all worked out, it actually was so, it was like such a relief because you handled all the paperwork, you did all the things. 
Well, the thing that we can do maybe better than an individual is because we deal with the banks, we can make the payoffs, uh, we get the title to come to you us. You can maybe do the financing for the new we person. We do the finance for the new person. So that's what a dealer has. And then, you know, anybody that's never been in sales, unfortunately, there's times that people make appointments and they don't get to be there. And, and yeah. so, you know, that, that kind of stuff happens. But that's what we do. I mean, we're here every day till 6 o'clock anyway or 7, whatever right. it takes. And so we want to be here when it's convenient for you to come and look. And so we keep our gates open um, so you can come and look come and even on Sunday. So. Yeah, and you can kind of walk through units yep. and stuff. Can we step outside real quick? And I wanted to just shoot a couple things and then... I wanted to go over something that I thought was really important for the new buyer as we're outside because sure. I think that would be a really good place to do it. So let's step outside real quick and go over that. All right, so we're down here on the row. I call it the row where all the units are that come through. And these are actually individually owned units, right? On I, right where we're at. They're, they're mixed. Um, okay. I own some, very few. They're over there. I own that one. And Van life. Yeah. I did own that one up there. It's got a deal on it. Yeah. So, so like very few. Here's the reason I wanted to come out here. It's like, like with us for the buyer mm -hmm. in this scenario played out. What happens is that doesn't happen in like the event where we're basically selling private. Here, the benefit to the buyer is you took my unit in, and then after you purchased it from me, like we agreed on the price, then you took the unit in. Well, late the Ford RV owns the unit. And then for the buyer, they go through the whole thing, right? They don't do, don't you do some sort of It's called a PDI. And so we bring it in, we pressurize all the, the propane lines, the water lines, we uh, light off or turn all the appliances on. And then we call it a walkthrough when the new buyer comes in, well then we walk them through them, show them things working, show them how to work things. Yeah, I see. A technician does that from the perspective of a guy that works on them for a living. Right. So we find it very helpful. I mean, it's, you know, people are excited when they're buying something right. new, so there's sometimes we have to go over it again on the phone later or they come back. And then you have all, also that element of having some sort of service element with a dealership where you have somebody to call versus if you were doing it, doing something on Facebook and you were a new, if you're a newbie like we were, we wouldn't know who to call if we had an issue if we bought it private. And so this scenario played out was really good for the buyer as well. We, we intend to introduce them to our parts department and right. our service department so they've got people to call if they've got questions. You know, sometimes their salespeople can answer, sometimes they can't. Right. And so we try to give them, yes, a home to call, call. in the case. And then we belong to a, a deal which we pay to belong to, which if uh, they are anywhere 100 miles from their home, right. Priority One Network, they get to um, go to a dealership that's an also a Priority One Network dealer. I didn't know this. And they've got, uh, I think, 24 to 48 hours. They have to look at their vehicle if it's something stopping them from using it. Right. If it's hot and the AC is off, not if the radio is not working, not if the TV is not working. It's keeping them from using their or finishing their vacation until they get back to us. Right. So we, we started doing that because if you if you buy one here and you're you're across the country, I can't touch and help you. Yeah. So this is the way we can. So then almost you become like a part of the. Well, late the Ford RV family. Yes. And the goal is, is then if you help them enough, when they're willing to sell or go forward, they're going to bring it back here because they like the process so much. I've, you guys want, we didn't buy a rig here, but they won me over through the process. It's like, yeah, I just, I enjoyed it because I saw such a, and I'm not being paid to do this video. I'm not being endorsing Olay the Ford RV by that. But I'm just saying that my experience was so wonderful that um, I wanted to bring value to others across the United States that if you're doing this, maybe stuff that you should ask. Like, if you're gonna do this at a, at a dealership and they're saying they're having a program similar to this, do you ask them about their warranties? You know, there's things that you should be asking um, if that's of value to them. And then, as far as inventory here, is it on your website? Yes, we try to keep our website current. Uh, the pictures we just can't haven't been able to keep up with, yeah. but we've got her back out and she's gonna hopefully get all caught up with that. that too. But uh, yeah, it's it's been it's been a great problem to have for the fact that it's just boomed more than anybody could imagine. Yeah, it's and an so, interesting interesting time we're in. Yes, yes, so, to say the least. And it, this whole scenario played out here, it changes so fast. Like that one's already sold, and then you got two sold down there, and you got a van life. You got, and then you got all the Class A's. So these units are rotating in quite frequently. Yeah, I think we got 70 sold this month, I think, on the board. It's so, crazy. Yeah. 
Well, I appreciate your time today. If you have any questions whatsoever, I'm sure you could always maybe find Wes's information or relate the Ford RV, talk to one of the sales guys or whatever, and they can go through that if you're around the Kansas City area. If you want to fly in, you can do that too. We but, pick you up at the airport. Really? We do. That's like a 45 minute drive. We do. Well, I didn't know that either. Yep. So until then, I think I'm going to wander around and see what's here and go from there. But I th hope this was of value today and uh, we really appreciate you guys tuning in to the Switch It Up crew and I don't know. I just hope that uh, if there was something that you think that we should have covered, let me know. Leave a comment and that would be great. But remember to like, comment, subscribe, and do all the things. And Wes, this is when we say, we're out.